Next. This is the um, home web page of the refugee program for Oregon, and there's a bunch of subsidiary pages. I went to the data page, which uh, that is there, and um, they sh they show the arrival numbers too. And there's some the arrival numbers that they show are somewhat higher than I got off of the uh, the, the national web page. So it's about 20 percent higher. Now, if you want to get into the subject, if you want to become one of Oregon's experts on refugees, that's something to do right right at the start. Is uh, track down the uh, the difference, you know, why the different numbers? You know, what is, is there some difference in meaning of the numbers? Next, please. So, what are we up against? The National Refugee VOLAG. So the VOLAG is voluntary agency, and also known as non-governmental organizations. Well, I consider the nine-member axis of evil. Next, please. Um, the ones in, in purple are uh, nominally religious organizations, you know, Lutherans, uh, Catholics, and so forth. And then there are four that are just, you might say, civic charities. But the thing is that they're not charities for the most part. Next, please. Their aggregate budgets in 2012 were about $800 million, of, of which uh, three quarters was paid by the federal government. So they're really just federal contractors. They're not, they're not passing the plate in the pews and uh, doing, doing this as a matter of sacrificial charity. It's a job. Um, plus, they have about 350 local affiliates. And I want to read something quick from uh, written by Don Barnett, which is, I think puts it better, and I wish I'd put it in, but it's, uh, I didn't, didn't get around to it. So uh, regarding these, um, the local affiliates, six-figure executive salaries are the norm at the roughly 350 organizations affiliated with the nine major contractors. There are additional hundreds of supporting NGOs, most, most staffed and started and staffed by refugees and recent immigrants, soaking up grants from nearly every agency of government. And there was also a, a smoking gun of a paper published in uh, about 2000 by someone who was high up in the State Department's uh, refugee, uh, you know, refugee programs. Uh, it was in 2000, but he was still in, in the program as late as 2012. And it's really something. Uh, he, this person wrote that the, the VOLAGs, voluntary agencies, form a single body called the Committee on Migration and Refugee Affairs. The committee wields enormous influence over the administration's refu refugee admissions policy. It lobbies Congress effectively to increase the number of refugees admitted for permanent resettlement each year. In fact, the federal government provides about 90% of its collective budget, of the committee's collective budget. If there's a conflict of interest, it is never mentioned. The solution the committee's members offer to every ref refugee crisis is simplistic and the same. Increase the number of admissions to the United States without regard to budgets or competing foreign policy considerations. So anyway, it's, uh, that's a burden on the, on the public, but next, Jerry, please. But the actual main fiscal burden is actually the, the welfare support for the refugees once, once they're here and they're, they're taking welfare and staying on welfare. Um, so I think you can see what I meant there. And uh, what, what are we working against besides these agencies? Well, we're working against the general ignorance of, of the public, of what's being uh, foisted on us. Um, I've got a couple quotes here from Mark Stein, the great colonist, and this is pr in particular referring to Muslim immigration to Europe. But I think it's, it, it caps, encapsulates what I have in mind. So it's Mark Stein in January of this year wrote, every day I get letters from people beginning in effect what do you mean the Islamization of Europe? It's the first I've heard of it. It's the first I've heard of it. <laughs> and, and then there's also, next please, the aspect of, you know, Americans take freedom for granted. They, they, they don't realize how, you know, how, how dismal life has been for most of humanity, for most of history. So uh, this is a Mark Stein quote from 2008. He was struck by the words of a Dutch, a Dutch homosexual humanist who was reflecting on the continent's uh, accelerating Islamification, he concluded that the jig was up for the Europe he loved. But what could he do? Next, please. I'm not a warrior, but who is? He shrugged. I have never learned to fight for my freedom. I was only good at enjoying it. Next. So what do we have as resources? Uh, first, uh, there's all, all kinds of stuff that you can read. This is a terrific book. Uh, even if, as long as I've been involved, uh, I read it a couple years ago, and I learned a lot. Uh, Vernon Briggs is a retired uh, economics professor for, for, from Cornell. He was also a, has been a board member of the Center for Immigration Studies. Uh, third edition, there's a, a, a big chapter on uh, refugee resettlement since 1965. Next, please. This is the social contract quarterly, which is put out by uh, 
U.S. Incorporated, which uh, is the host of the me a meeting that Cynthia and I will be attending in September annual meetings. Uh, they put put this out four times a year, and sometimes they have a special issue. It always has something to do with. It's always about environment, population, and immigration. Uh, and that particular issue was a specialty issue about uh, the refugee resettlement. Here is Ann Corcoran, who uh, is a self-taught uh, expert now, probably the go-to person in the country for uh, up-to-date knowledge about what's happening re with regard to refugee resettlement everywhere in the country, and she also writes about Europe as well. She's based in Maryland. She just did a west Western tour, a driving tour, 6,000 miles in her, uh, in her car, and I accompanied her in the Montana leg of her tour. She has this, this website, Refugee Resettlement Watch. If you go there, uh, one of the things you can look at first is the, is the fact sheet, which is accessed from her home page. Uh, next, please. So there, there's, the, there's the website. Just, just, just type in Refugee Resettlement. And you'll find it right away just by Googling. And since 2007, when she started, she, she started by fighting, fighting off a refugee re threat in her rural Maryland uh, county and, and just got interested in it, and it has, has been a the mainstay of movement ever since. She's done more than 7,000 blog entries. About about 75 of them include Oregon. So she hasn't covered Oregon Oregon heavily. Next, please. And uh, a few years ago, she published this booklet, Refugee Resettlement and the Hijra to America. Hijra is Muslim, Muslim conquest by immigration, basically. That's what it amounts to. I note the uh, unfortunate inclusion of the statue, uh, but uh, that's pretty big typical now. It's uh, 80 pages, six bucks at Amazon, or just download it for free. It's it's a good read. It's uh, it's worth worth your time. It's a quick read. Next, please. And just a few days ago, um, she uh, was writing about Twin Falls, Idaho. Twin Falls has a Chobani uh, Greek yogurt plant. It was built there, and the company is uh, the, is pressing to bring in refugees for for the cheap labor. And uh, anyway, Ann uh, writes that. Uh, in industries in need, need of cheap immigrant labor are changing the face of America, not as a grand experiment promoting the joys of diversity, not to help the downtrodden, but to line the pockets of those running large, large global co corporations with the help of charities. Those are her quotes, but my read. Uh, the U.S. State Department and with the blessings of lackeys and local government. And a lot of local governments are complicit in this by uh, sort of being round heels for it. Next. Um, so don't go, just, just don't don't just go home and mope. There's all kinds of stuff that can be done. Uh, next, please. Uh, Anne recommend these are her recommendations. Form a strategy and coordination committee, mostly to, next please, <clears throat> digging up, basically digging up dirt, that is digging up compromising information. I don't mean sexually compromising, I mean, you know, f f chicanery uh, inf about, about what's going on, what's driving refugee resettlement if, you're, if your community hasn't been impacted so far, but it looks like it's going to be. Find the connections between the public officials and the interests. Is there a labor-intensive industry coming to town? Is there some local history with, with refugees in the town that would you know, be an inducement to well, bring more in? Next, please. And one of the things she emphasizes most strongly is uh, do a blog. That is, don't just, use, don't just collect your information and keep it at home. Spread it around. Make it available to everybody. Next, please. A little bit more. Um, you guys in Ofer are probably the national experts at getting your legislature to do stuff. Um, so in session, there's lobbying and testifying on, uh, on bills. There isn't a whole lot the state can do about refugees, but you can be a, a, a state that doesn't encourage refugee resettlement. You can say, you know, we want more details, you know, what's it going to cost, and so forth and so on. You can push back from the federal government. When you're out of session, individual contacts with legislators. Next. Uh, letters to the editor and op-ed writing, and you guys do a lot of that already, so uh, I don't need to tell you anything more about that. Next, please. Uh, this is a paper, a three-page paper, put out by Federation for American Immigration Reform, FAIR. Uh, it's an excellent uh, piece, it's an excellent resource. It gives some uh, concrete suggestions on things that you can do at the state level to, to push back. And, uh, and that, uh, Rick, Rick and Cynthia have already actually used the paper, I gather. There are no silver bullets, you know, it all takes grinding work. Next. Um, we need more good ideas. I'm, not, I'm a writer, I'm not a source of uh, brilliant uh, tactical ideas. Next. It doesn't matter who gets the credit. That's, that's something I like to emphasize. There is, uh, within the um, movement for immigration and national interest, there's some jealousy, you know, who gets credit for this and that. I'm with Roy Beck, I just want to win. 
I just want to save the country. Next. And finally, <clears throat> uh, the public is with us if, if they're informed. In, 2000, in 2012, uh, we had a big ballot victory in Montana. We didn't have to collect signatures. The legislature put a legislative referendum on our ballot to uh, reduce the, the number of uh, benefits available to illegal aliens in Montana. It won with nearly 80% of the vote. We didn't have any money behind it to pass it, but people instinctively went for it. Um, it's not actually in force. It got stymied in the courts, but the important thing was the vote, indicating the public's, public's uh, disgust with illegal immigration. And finally, well, of course, what you guys did in, in 2014 in a very, uh, very Democrat-oriented state, you um, beat, beat back driver's licenses for illegal aliens by two to one. So, uh, one more slide. So, I'm, we're not going to go through any of this, we're out of time, and I would, didn't intend to, but if you go to the file, you'll see I have some additional information on a number of uh, related topics. So, uh, it's uh, ten, 5 before 3, it's time for a few questions and comments, and then we'll...